This video is going to talk about finding the inverses of block matrices using the formula that we had for block upper triangular matrices. Okay. So first thing is, I'm actually over in web work in question number five. You probably have different numbers, but this is the one that got randomly generated for me. So this is the same exact formula that we had in class. We have an upper triangular block matrix right here. So each of those components are blocks. The zero here that's boldface tells you that that's the zero matrix. It's not just the single number zero. We then have the formula that says the inverse of this block matrix is the zero block is still a zero block in the lower part. The two blocks on the diagonal, you just take their inverses. This actually is a typo right here. That should be subscript 2, 2. And then in the part that is the block that's not one of the diagonal blocks, you're going to multiply the two inverses that you got on the diagonal. And then in the middle, you'll have the original block that was in that location and then flip the signs. Okay, so that's the formula. Now, in terms of what we're given here or what I'm giving here, you're told that A equals bottom row, three zeros and a five, last column, one, two, three, and then the five at the bottom. And everything else is just tagged with the block A11. And you're told that A11 or the inverse of A11 is this three by three matrix. Now, according to our formula, a inverse is going to be, and I'm going to use this formula right down here. Notice it's exactly the same formula, except for this lower block, this block in the last row of blocks, last column of blocks is a single number. The inverse of a single number is just one over that number. So here this said, hey, our block on the bottom was just the three zeros. Our block on the side was the numbers one, two, three. And our block on the bottom was just the single number five. So when we do the formula, the zero block stays zero. The inverse of the single number gets the reciprocal, so this is one fifth. And then there is something that happens over here in the corner, which it, it doesn't do. That's the part that it asks us to calculate. Then it also tells you that, hey, the part that should go in right here, that's going to be your inverse of A11. You weren't told what A11 equaled, but you were told what the inverse is, so this part would just plug in right there. Okay. So let's see how we would calculate all of that. So I've got the same stuff already prepped up over here. So in order to calculate your inverse, first of all, let's grab that same format. So first thing I would always recommend doing is make sure you highlight your blocks here. Our blocks are going to be right there. Same block structure up here. Same block structure right through there. Okay. Now, in order to grab your inverse of the entire matrix, you're already told with our formula right here that I'm going to star that A11's inverse goes in that upper corner. So I'm just going to copy down this 3 by 3 matrix. Now that's the part that over in WebWork it just gave the symbol A11 inverse. Now according to our formula that start up at the top, the first column, second row block is supposed to stay all zeros. It's actually going to stay the exact same size too, so it'll be three zeros right down here at the bottom. We're also told in this last block that I overwrote the exponent right there that we're going to take the inverse of whatever block A22 was. A22 is this guy right here, which is 5, so that's where that 1 fifth comes into play. All of this was already given to you in WebWork. Now, what goes into that position, this is your formula, negative A11 to inverse times A12 times the inverse of A22. So now we just have to pull those things. So a, ne, the inverse of A11 is just that 3 by 3 matrix. So just copy down that 3 by 3 matrix. A12, this is the guy that in the block position is first row of blocks, second column of blocks. So this is actually a vector or a 3 by 1 matrix of the numbers 1, 2, 3. And lastly, we have A22 inverse. In our case, that's just the number 1 over 5. Now we just need to calculate that, and once we figure out whatever that ma new matrix is, that's the thing that goes into the missing piece. So I'm going to pull the 1 fifth out front, so we have negative 1 fifth. We still need to multiply those two matrices together, so let me recopy them. At this point, we're just doing matrix multiplication. So when we do matrix multiplication, 
we will multiply each row in the first matrix by each column in the second matrix. Notice there's only one column in the second matrix. So you just multiply each row in the first matrix by that column, one, two, three. So we have negative one times positive one, which is just negative one. We have positive one times two, which is just two. We have three times three, which is nine. Now we'll still figure out what that value is, but we'll do that in a second. Then we look at our second row in the first matrix, and we'll multiply it by each column in the second matrix, i.e. the only column we have. So we'll have 0 times 1, which is 0, 2 times 2, which is 4, 4 times 3, which is 12, and then we just have to figure out what that number is. Lastly, we multiply it by the last row in the matrix, the unhighlighted one. So 0 times 1 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0, and negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, so I should not have put that plus right there. This tells us we have negative 1 fifth times, that looks like 10, 16, and negative 12. And so to get the final answer that you actually need to plug in up there, you want to multiply the negative 5 through or negative one-fifth through. So negative one-fifth of 10 is negative two. Negative one-fifth of 16 is negative 3.2. And negative 12 times negative one-fifth is gonna be positive or 2.4. These guys right here is what web work is asking you to plug in. So I'm gonna take those exact same numbers and we'll plug it into web work. So here we would plug in that negative 2, we'd plug in that negative 3.2 that we just found, and we plug in the 2.4. Notice we're not plugging in the full matrix because last row is already given. It technically already gives you this first 3 by 3 part, even though it's in symbol form, because it's right there. So the only thing you're missing is those three values, that's it. Okay. And we could check this and see this, if that's right and it says hey yep you're missing stuff because i didn't do the second problem but that is all it's asking for here so you do have to do a little bit of work with the formula but it's not asking you to write in the full matrix just that one missing block